Eventually I'm going to edit out these intros where I come in and I sit down, right? No one wants to see that. <laughs> um, hey, actually somebody leaked information on a new uh, crop sensor. The IMX671 uh, AQR. Yeah, with uh, square pixel arrays. And here's the answer to the Jeopardy question. How do you actually get more megapixels on a crop sensor without completely destroying the dynamic range. Um, 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 you eliminate out the space between round photo sites and you stick in square ones! So you're actually able to increase pixel density significantly, nearly double it, essentially double it, and yet still have good dynamic range, which apparently it actually has 36 decibels of gain in a 16-bit AD converter. Yes. So, <clears throat> well, this is pure speculation, as others are speculating. The IMX671 AQR is apparently the sensor that will probably, most assuredly, uh, appear in the Fujifilm X-H2 next year. Um, both myself and the guy at uh, Fuji Rumors said that it's not going to come this year on the X-H2. Undeniably so. I also said in like four different videos, and I was 100% correct on that because I knew it was impossible. You don't, companies, whether it be camera equipment or otherwise, do not destroy off or kill off major lines. Like, you don't, you wouldn't, like, Toyota would not take the super popular RAV4 and the super popular Corolla and say, screw it, and like merge the two so that it'd end up with this hybrid. Even if the hybrid is really, really awesome, you just don't do that. It's called losing market share. It's also called losing retail space which is very important for uh, digital cameras and also, also to electronics. It's the same reason HP did not destroy Compaq when they bought them. They just kept the Compaq name going so they'd have as much floor space. They knew there was no possibility because the X-H1 was incredibly popular and a lot of people have forgot. But since I get out so many countless thousands of emails and comments and I read all the comments, here is what happened and this is Fujifilm's mistake and they're not going to repeat this mistake. It's not really a mistake, but in the near term, it was a, a significant mistake, is that they came out with the X-H1, and everybody's like, oh my God, this camera, and I have an X-H1. This camera is just epic tata. -ta. This is awesome. DSLR ergos, it's got a five-point uh, suspension, spring suspension on the shutter mech. It is just wickedly freaking quiet. There's also a leaf shutter, not a leaf shutter shutter, a leaf spring shutter in the uh, shutter release button, which is super soft and buttery. And man, the X-H1 is just, it's, it's awesome. But everybody, the reason it didn't go over, and it did go over strongly by those that owned the X-H1, they're like, man, this is awesome. But it basically had the specifications, even though it had an IBIS mech, which everybody wanted, and improved video. People had a hissy fit because very, very shortly afterwards, the X-T3, um, was announced and then it popped out and then people were like well the hell with this xh1 you know the xt3 uh, has got a new sensor and even though it doesn't have ibis you know it's significantly cheaper and it's got way better video specifications and it doesn't have ibis but that messed with it but then the xh1 after a period of time and fujifilm realized that their super awesome camera was overshadowed by their other super awesome camera the xt3 the X-H1 price for new, you know, you get a free vertical grip and uh, they've essentially stopped making the X-H1. I, I hear they're actually still making some, but the X-H1 is, um, would drop to the price, and I think it still currently is, even though the availability has vanished because so many people bought it. The X-H1, you get a brand new X-H1 with a vertical grip for a thousand bucks, which is just the stupidest thing I'm at, which is ridiculously cheap. It's like getting a Lamborghini for 5,000 bucks. You just like shut up and buy it. And then Fujifilm sold the hell and gone at 1,000 bucks with a free vertical grip on the X-H1. Because that camera is awesome. It's awesome. For 1,000 bucks, it's just ridiculous. Everybody was, people were emailing. It was like, Ken, do you know where the hell I could get this? I mean, I got it. And that's just like, you know, a month or so ago. Like, I got to buy this camera. I know how awesome it is, even though it's older. You know, it doesn't have all the improved video functionality and buffer of the X-T3. The X-H1 is incredible. So there is, and when I say this, this is not speculation. It's undeniable fact. There is zero chance or likelihood that Fujifilm 
we'll even get close to that mistake on the X-H1, which ain't coming out this year. I've said that, and uh, the Fuji Rumors guy said the same thing. And even he emailed me. We don't really get along pretty much, you know. You know, I, I don't mind the guy at all. I mean, you know, bless his heart. I never met him or nothing. If I met him, actually, I'd give him a hug. But even he emailed me. He's like, man, I get all these XH2 questions. And uh, he said, you know, it's coming out next year. It ain't coming out in 2020. But when it does, there's no chance in hell that Fujifilm will make that mistake. When the XH2 rears its head in March or April, who knows, in 2021, not this year, next year, you know, it's going to have speculation on this. Surely this sensor, probably. Yeah. And uh, all the improvements of the, uh, of the X-T4. And then some. What those then sums are going to be, who knows. But I could guess it would be like pixel shift uh, that uh, is going to be implemented very, very soon in my GFX100, where the, the IBIS mech moves around super fast, you know, literally less than a blink of an eye, and then it combines all those. I mean, that'll be incredible. So when the X-H2 does pop its head out, Fujifilm will not be confronted with the huge problem that they had with the X-H1, which was not a problem with the camera at all, but by the fact that the X-T3 very, very soon afterwards came out and it eclipsed, like, completely, the X-H1. And that was not good. I don't know who made that decision at Fujifilm, but everybody agrees that was a, a mistake. But not really, because the X-H1 is incredible. And when they dropped the price so significantly on the X-H1, everybody and their brother bought that damn camera. Free, I mean, an X-H1 with a free vertical grip and all of that together for a thousand bucks? Awesome. There's a reason why everybody sold out of that camera. Like, shoop! It was, it's gone everywhere. There might be still one or two in pockets in various corners of the earth, but shoop, gone. So the X-H1 popularity went like this, skyrocketed, and then very, very soon afterwards, the X-T3 and specifications were announced, and then it went shoomp. Everybody complained, and then it went like this, and then Fujifilm dropped the price to nothing, and then its popularity in the past half year, when they dropped the price just crazy cheap, it just went shoomp, right through the roof, and they were all gone. Everybody bought, everybody bought an X-H1. So there is no chance in hell that Fujifilm will make that same mistake twice when, in 2021, not this year, the X-H2 is announced. But there's a certain subset of people, this is not my opinion, it's a fact, and I see it every time. Like when a new camera is about to come out, it was just announced, like the X-T4, but people are always like looking five cameras, like, you know, I know the X-T4 is really awesome, but I'm going to wait for the X-T8. I know they're going to perfect it. <laughs> I was like, every time a new camera comes out, 24 seconds later, someone, a bunch of people email me or contact me and whatnot. It's like, well, <laughs> when do you think the X-T6? <laughs> like, right after the X-H1 came out, immediately, the very day, people are like, what do you think about the X-H2? It's like, what are you talking about? There's nobody on earth talking about the X-H2. Not even rumor sites are talking about it. But that always happens. I find that extremely, extremely funny. <laughs> I'm never going to get rid of the X-H1, by the way. That camera's awesome. Um, I know, because I also have the X-T3. I know the, you know the improvements and whatnot. It's the same thing kind of with my GFX100, my $10,000 beast. You know, it's so much better in every way, pretty much. Than my GFX uh, 50R with that old sensor in it. <laughs> I laugh when someone says old sensor in the GFX 50S or 50R. That camera is incredible. I'm never going to get rid of the 50R because it's the camera I've been waiting for for like 15 years. A compact, relatively inexpensive. And I just got done singing a part of it. You can get a GFX 50R used now. And in the UK, where everything is expensive, people are emailing me in the UK. It's like, dude, next dude down the street or whatever has got. You know, a used GFX 50R, he wants $2,600. So it's ridiculous. Yeah, and he's selling the super awesome 45 millimeter you recommend for, you know, five, six hundred. dollars That's ridiculous. I mean, people are picking up lens and GFX 50R cameras for like $3,100, $3,200. I mean, that is stupid cheap. It's cheaper than a brand new Nikon D850. That is ridiculous for medium format. 
Everything I said past th uh, starting three years ago about medium format Fujifilm, I was 100% correct on. Yeah, can't be right on every speculation, but logical analysis, I knew I was 100% right on that, and I'm, I'm also right on the X-H2. Fujifilm is no chance in hell going to make the same mistake with the X-H2 that they made with the X-H1. The X-H1 was not a mistake in any way. It's that it got overshadowed and immediately eclipsed by the X-T3, which popped out very shortly after the X-H1 release. That's not a mistake of the camera. It's a mistake of marketing. Marketing. Did I say that? I'll edit that out later. <laughs> it's a mistake by somebody. Not a mistake of the camera. I think I made that clear. Yeah. So that's also, too, the reason why that Fuji Rumors guy posted that posting about the X-H2 like about eight hours ago. He, his posting basically said, stop asking me about the X-H2. It ain't coming this year, but it's definitely coming. Um, and as I said, once again, must I re reiterate, I knew Fujifilm, it was just, unless, and people at Fujifilm are not stupid, there was just, it would have been total stupidity to completely merge the X-T3 and uh, X-H lines into one hybrid going forward. You just don't do that, because the X-H series is really popular, as you can tell, because everybody's asking about the X-H2. The X-T3 series is insanely popular. You just don't mer merge two insanely popular lines. You keep them separate and going forward because those are your money makers. Money makers. I think I made everything abundantly clear in this video and reiterated it two or three times. Someone's going to say, you repeated yourself over and over again. I hate you. Ah, I hate you. I'm like, okay, that's good. That's good. So why don't you, this is my pat response. Why don't you go click on some of those affiliate links over on uh, What's-His-Face What's his face? His channel, you know. Buy my book. Click my link now. Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> uh, people are like, how do you put up with all these abusive people on the internet? I was like, well, it's the internet, you know. If you look up the internet on the dictionary, you'd be like, the internet, the play, the place where people go to abuse other people and remain anonymous. The internet, right? Of course, I'm right. I don't even have to ask to make that statement. You gotta drink too much caffeine today. Thanks. Bye. Some other people also recently commented, you need to whiten up your uh, caffeine stained teeth. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm also fat and bald too and covered in tattoos, in case you didn't notice. <sighs> yeah.